Hello, this is the American Medical Association's COVID-19 update. Today, we have our weekly look at the numbers, trends, and latest news about COVID-19 with AMA's Chief Health and Science Officer, Dr. Mira Irons in Chicago. I'm Todd Unger, AMA's Chief Experience Officer, also in Chicago. Uh, Dr. Irons, over the past week, uh, we had a chance to hear from President Biden uh, in his joint uh, session with Congress. What was his key message on the pandemic in that speech? So, Todd, the president largely struck a hopeful tone on the pandemic. He pointed to his accomplishments with vaccines. You know, he hit the 100-day mark this past Friday, April 30th, and the administration actually reached 200 million vaccine doses about a week before that date on April 22nd, and his goal was 100 million vaccine doses. Um, he also noted, and this is really important, um, that nearly 70 percent of seniors are now fully protected from the virus, and senior deaths from COVID-19 are down 80 percent since January. Despite the successes, he did implore the public to remain on guard. Well, you got to say we're in a much different position than we were a few months ago uh, with uh, some uh, states where vaccine supply is even exceeding the demand right now. I think the key concern as we pass those milestones that you just talked about was, you know, are we going to be able to continue this pace of vaccination to get to where we need? And there's some indications that it seems to be slowing. What's your perspective on that? Yeah, it is slowing, and, and that's concerning. Although, you know, I think um, a lot of people are saying that that, that um, should have been expected because when we had um, demand much higher than supply, um, there they were groups of uh, uh, people that that really were, were waiting for the vaccine. So we were kind of waiting for this uh, to happen. Um, the average number of daily shots has declined 20% in the past two weeks. If vaccinations had continued on their earlier pace, about 10 million additional Americans would have received their first shot in April. The fact that they didn't will lead to obviously more cases, more hospitalizations and death than needed to happen. Um, you know, the CDC said of last, as of last Thursday, about 143.8 million people have received at least one dose of a COVID-19 vaccine, including about 99.7 million who have been fully vaccinated. You know, providers are administering about 2.63 million doses per day on average. Um, and, you know, that's that's a large number, but it is a 22% decrease from the peak of 3.38 million reported April 13th. Yes, we definitely moved through that kind of wave of, uh, you know, high demand folks. Uh, for the vaccine. I will say personally, I did a good job this week of working through some concerns with somebody on my particular team, and I'm proud to say she's getting her first dose today. So uh, mm -hmm. shout out to her. Um, uh, in other news last week, there was a change in guidance from the CDC regarding masks, uh, which means when I walk my dog by myself, I don't need to wear a mask because I'm fully vaccinated and out there by myself. Why don't you tell uh, folks out there, Dr. Irons, you know, what exactly are the new guidelines for masks? Um, you're right. The CDC did ease outdoor mask guide guidance for vaccinated Americans, but you know, they're, it's small steps. They're taking very careful small steps, and it's nuanced. So understanding it is really important. The mask guidance is modest and carefully written and based on evidence. Americans who are fully vaccinated against the coronavirus no longer need to wear a mask outdoors when walking, running, hiking, or biking alone, or when in small gatherings, including with members of their own households. However, masks are still necessary in crowded outdoor venues like sports stadiums. Um, the CDC also stopped short of telling even fully vaccinated people that they should shed their masks outdoors altogether, citing the worrying risk that remains for transmitting the coronavirus, unknown vaccination levels among people in crowds, and the still high caseloads in some regions of the country. Um, the guidance also cautioned even vaccinated people against going without masks in medium-sized outdoor gatherings. So, you know, this is something I think, again, uh, uh, people are just not used to the fact that we are still learning uh, mm -hmm. about this and the science continues. Can you talk about the science behind this revision and guidance? Yeah, you're absolutely right. And and we're still gathering information. And that's what the CDC is doing. It's They're waiting until they get the science and the evidence before making recommendations. A growing body of research indicates that the odds of the virus spreading outdoors are far lower than they are indoors. But that risk is not zero and is hard to quantify. Most, if not all, of the research about viral transmission outside was done before the vaccine was available. So it does not distinguish between the risks to those who are inoculated 
inoculated and those who are not. We do know that virus particles disperse quickly outdoors, meaning brief encounters with a passing walker or jocker pose very little risk of transmission. However, the way you think about it and the way I think about it is that the risk of getting COVID is much lower outdoors than indoors and vaccination decreases that risk even more. In addition, vaccinated people have a significant degree of protection while unvaccinated people don't. So you have to think about the risk to yourself and your family, the risk to others that you are in contact with who are not vaccinated, um, as well as the current COVID activity in the community. But the guidelines reflect some basic coronavirus math, math. As the number of vaccinated people goes up, cases are going down. Well, that is good news. And uh, again, uh, everybody get those vaccines so we can keep learning. Um, Dr. Irons, let's talk about the actual number of cases and deaths. Uh, start the U.S. and then let's take a look uh, more broadly at some trouble spots around the world. Absolutely. So, you know, the numbers um, are uh, 32,289,907 people in the U.S. Uh, diagnosed with uh, this condition, and 575,197 people have died from it. Um, but, you know, we're starting to see really um, important declines. More than half of U.S. states have seen a significant decline in new virus cases over the past two weeks, suggesting that the trajectory is improving. Um, in addition, I, I, more specifically, case numbers have fallen by 15 percent or more in 28 states, the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico, and we've seen drops of 30 percent or more in 14 states um, and the District of Columbia. Michigan, you know, we've talked about Michigan for the last few weeks, um, ha which has endured one of the nation's most severe recent outbreaks, is now seeing rapid improvement with cases they are down 40 percent. Um, and I think that it's important to note that federal officials um, have also taken note. Um, Dr. Rochelle Walensky, a few years, a few weeks ago, you know, had a, expressed a concern of, re, of impending doom. Um, she's now, last Wednesday, said she was beginning to see progress, and I think her quote is really important. Um, cases are starting to come down. We think that this is related to increased vaccination, increased people taking caution, and so I'm cautiously optimistic that we're turning the corner. However, the virus is an opportunist and could strike in communities with low vaccination rates. Um, as we've discussed, persistent vaccine hesitancy remains a challenge. So that's good news in the U.S., and I'm glad to see Dr. Walensky uh, uh, coming a little bit more optimistic of what we're seeing and probably explains you know, as the vaccination rates go up and we do see all the, you know, people let their guard down, mm -hmm. uh, you see these kind of things blow up. We saw that in Michigan. Now we're seeing that in Oregon. And so hopefully, folks, uh, let's keep the vaccinations rolling. Um, India, different story. Um, let's talk about what you're seeing in the rest of the world. Oh, really tragic. You know, the numbers, um, uh, if you... Uh, just hearing about um, what is happening in India um, just uh, is tragic. So India, as we've talked about, is still struggling. Its virus caseload is reaching new highs and its vaccination drive is faltering. Um, the he health ministry on Thursday reported more than 375,000 cases and more than 3,600 deaths. And hospitals were warned of critical shortages of ventilator, uh, ventilator beds, med medical oxygen, medicines, and other life-saving supplies. Last Wednesday, the U.S. government authorized families of diplomat, diplomats to leave India and advised other Americans there to leave as soon as it's safe to do so. But India isn't the only country struggling. Um, we also saw COVID-19 deaths surging to record, record highs in Pakistan, um, with the government responding by sending troops to the streets to help enforce coronavirus precautions. Um, vaccination efforts there, too, are progressing slowly. And it's a similar story in Turkey, which is bracing for its strictest lockdown yet as the virus surges and vaccinations lag. Um, just serves to remind us that we really need to address this pandemic on a global level in order to get past it. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Irons, for being here today and for giving us your perspective. Uh, we'll see you next week for another update. In the meantime, for more information on COVID-19, visit ama-assn.org slash COVID-19. Thanks for joining us today. Please take care.